Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Exalt Thy Horn Ministries. Uh, I'm up here actually at work right now, and I felt led to come out here and share a message. Um, this is the this is the card that I had received up here, and it just shows how much the enemy really works. A lot of people think by passing these cards out that they're doing people a favor. And they're actually not. Um, because their doctrine does not come against what keeps you away from an eternal destruction of torment and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Um, this says here, how to know 100% sure uh, that you will go to heaven. Without a doubt that you will go to heaven. And it talks about here, um, quotes 1 John 5.13 These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So they think as long as they believe and acknowledge His name that they're okay from time to time to slip up. All we have to do is confess. Um, confess our sins and He is just and faithful to forgive our sins. Well, that is true. But see, you're looking in the scriptures. These, what, What's going on is they're trying to find ways to sin instead of using God's word to depart from their sins and be cleansed and be pure. If your heart is looking for a way to sin through God's holy and precious word, your heart is not right. Your heart is not right with the Lord. And, that's what a, and this is how the devil will work. Because I... I had actually talked to a woman up here and that's what she acknowledges and and um, number one it says first we are all sinners that's true um, number two says where sin came from talks about where sin came from God's price of sin and our way out our way out is through taking on the life of Jesus Christ losing our life to find it I want to read to you guys here this really goes on to never talking about striving and there has to be a striving. There has to be a crucifying of the flesh. There has to be a being crucified to the world. There has to be a separation from the world. Remember all of these things, guys. Remember, search the scriptures out for yourself. And know that's the only way that you're going to inherit eternal life. Is if you love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, might, soul, and strength. If you love him, you will what? First John says, "You, if you love him, you will abide in his word remember this is a holy word it's called the holy bible and god's word's holy and if this word lives inside of us then we must be holy and how do we get to that way well we're chastened paul says i present you as chaste virgins to christ amen i want to read to you some scriptures guys because this has been brewing upon my heart it's a tragedy how the devil will go about and people are doing his own work as Paul writes in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2 I believe it's the last verse people are doing the will of Satan and that's what happens out here in this world and uh, many are doing it and they, some of them don't even know they're doing it and when you try to tell them the truth um, they will not acknowledge it they push you away and say that you you are Beelzebub and you're a devil in 2 Timothy don't turn there but I just wanted to read this. And they that may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. That's what it is doing, handing these out, because this is giving you a way out to sin, not a way out to stop your sin. This is not giving you a way out to strive for holiness. This is telling you that Jesus Christ went to a cross so that you could still live in your sins, that you're never going to come to this point of not being a wretch that's not true oh wretched man that i am paul says who can deliver me from this death there has to be a deliverance there has to be a freedom from it and he says i thank my lord and my savior jesus christ hallelujah to the lamb of god galatians galatians uh you know what first no i want to go to philippians guys the lord's putting this on my heart hallelujah to the lamb of god let's turn to the book of philippians chapter 3 Philippians 3, before we go to Galatians, I'm going to go to Galatians, but first I want to turn to the book of Philippians chapter 3, glory to God, 
Now Paul's talking about if anybody's in the flesh, he's talking about beware of these dogs in chapter 3, verse 2. Beware of evil workers of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Now remember, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. These books tell you that you can't walk in the Spirit, that you're always going to be in your flesh. You're always going to have this time of, I'm, I'm just a wretch. Um, that's not the case. Um, be an overcomer. Don't listen to man. Listen to God. Amen. We're the, we're the circumcision that worship Him in spirit. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, he says, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Now, to have confidence in your flesh, it, that's talking about this flower. In other words, what he's talking about, look what he says, circumcised the eighth day, the stock of the tribe. His flesh was put up on this pedestal. He received this flower, this glory from being a religious man, not because he was committing lewd sins, it was because he was persecuting the church, the ones that were uh, speaking it by spirit and by faith. So what he's really going on is he, he gained a flower. He gained glory in his flesh for the righteous things that he do, did. Amen. Stephen's death, he held their coats. Uh, persecuting the church, all these things. He was put up on a pedestal. He received glory. That was his flower for doing righteous deeds in this world. But look what Paul is going to go on to say here. Remember, he's crucified with Christ now. He, sa he says, I was a Hebrew of the Hebrew, a Pharisee, concerning the law, zealous, amen, persecuting the church, uh, concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Amen. In other words, you have to lose your life. You have to lose your flower. You have to lose all that glory. In 1 Peter, it says the flesh is as the grass and the flower is the glory of the flesh. But the word of the Lord endures forever. In other words, that's Christ. He says, what things that were gained to me, I have counted all things but lost for Christ. Look what he says. I've counted all lost to know him. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Look what he's saying here, guys. This is, this is glorious beyond glorious because that flower had to be burned up. He had to crucify that flower, that glory that they were giving him in this world for his religious, for his religious activities that he was doing, for his zeal for the law. Amen. The law was fulfilled in the one that he was crucified with, and that was Jesus Christ. Glory to God. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, all the things that were given to him, and he received as a flower, those things that were glory to him. He had to let it all go, because when you lose your life, you're losing, you're, you're losing that recognition. You're losing your portfolio. You're losing your glory and your flesh, and your flesh is now crucified with Christ. But look what happens when you do that. And count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. All those things are nothing to me. Those things will profit me nothing. All the all the the glory that they were given me is nothing because those things are not of Christ. But Christ is my everything. Christ is the one I've put my faith in. Christ is the one that liveth in me. I'm not even my own self no more. It's Christ that liveth in me is what he's saying. And be found in him. I want to be found in him. Hallelujah. Not having my own righteousness. There's nothing righteous in us. That's true. We're all sinners. But when we allow Christ to live through us, it's not us that live, it's Christ that liveth through us, hallelujah. And if you say that the one that lives in you is a wretch and a sinner, then you're, caught, then you're actually blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That's what it means. Now you can repent from that. You don't want to stay in that. And look what Paul's going to say here in Galatians as we go to it. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. Does Christ live in you? He that is in you is greater than he that is in this world, greater than that flower that they gave Paul in his flesh for being zealous for all the law and all the good deeds. Amen. That is the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Oh, when you let the world go. The world's going to persecute you. When you push the world away, when you shun the world, it's going to shun you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. They wanted to destroy him, and he was let down in a basket. Hallelujah to the Lamb. They put garrisons at the gate to kill him. 
But Paul escaped out of their hand as God is able to deliver you out of the mouth of the lion. Be strong and of a good courage. Have no fear. God is with you to deliver you, to prepare a table in the midst of your enemies, to overcome that Jezebel spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God is able to do all things. Let us live by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now they'll take this and say, see, you're not perfect. No, but the one that lives in you is. And if he that lives in you, guess what? He said to be holy. He said to strive to enter the straight gate. We're going to look at that. But first turn to Galatians, guys. Turn to Galatians because, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched all these people? It's the serpent. He's doing the same thing in this world that he was doing in the Garden of Eden. He's telling lies. He's the father of lies. And he's out to kill, steal, and destroy your soul. He wants people to believe that you can just say that I believe on the Son of God and I can go through this condition of a sinner's prayer and I'm now saved and sanctified for the rest of my life. Those are lies. Those are deceptions. These are angels of light giving out these pamphlets to persuade you in your sins that you're okay in your sin. And I'm here to tell you by the hand of God because God has called me. God has called me. Yes, he's called something foolish in this world to confound the things that are wise. God has called me to tell you that the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God, hallelujah, is eternal life through your faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Christ is able. The one that lives in you is able to overcome the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Your iniquity, your sin, this world, he can do all things and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. In Galatians chapter 1. Paul's going to talk here about there's only one gospel and though it's the holy God, it's the holy Bible, it's the holy word and he is the word made flesh and his name is Christ and my faith is in the one, my faith is in him. Look what he says, only one gospel. He says, I marvel, in other words, laughter, I'm chuckling. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him, who's him, Christ the one that came to bring the word that was from the Father. The Father is holy. He didn't tell you that it's okay to go out and commit sin and that you, then you can have grace, sin, grace, sin, grace. No, 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 no. Don't be deceived. Those are angels of light. Paul is living by faith. Paul is crucified to his flesh. Paul is living for Christ all the days of his life as you and I can do the same thing if we're willing to crucify this flesh. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. From Him who called you in the grace of Christ. How do you receive that grace? Oh, glory to God. You've come and you acknowledge that there's one way, there's one accord. As John the Baptist cried for your soul, I'm doing the same thing. Do it for your brethren out there. Do it for your sisters out there. Do it for the body of Christ. There's somebody out there that's a lost sheep and that needs to hear the edification and the strength that you can go through the sufferings of Christ and you can overcome the world and you can be with him forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. From him who called you in the grace to a different gospel which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, talking about me, God has no respect to persons, is what he's going to say here, or an angel from heaven, preach any of the gospel to you than what we have preached to you. Let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. How do you blaspheme the Holy Ghost? You say that he's a sinner. You say that he's a wretch. Because he's not. He's holy. He's from the Father. And there's nothing unholy about the Father. The Father's given you the Holy Ghost. That's the dove that came upon Jesus Christ after he was baptized in the shape of a dove. And filled him. And that was holy. And it was spotless without blemish. And he must see us through his beloved son in whom he's well pleased. This Christ liveth in you. How do you know? You'll know them by the fruit. A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. Verse 9. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel, he says it twice, to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Anybody telling you that it's okay to look back 
it's okay from time to time to sin that you can never completely stop sinning those are lies from the devil when you have the Holy One of, of Israel living in you the Holy Spirit you have the power to quench every fiery dart of the devil. You have the power to overcome serpents and scorpions, to tread upon them, the Bible says. Because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. He overcomes all things. In verse 10, this is where I wanted to go. He says, For do I now persuade men or God? This is persuading men. This is getting people in their doors. This is getting tithe money. This is building buildings. This is building... Um, services and training classes evening uh youth youth groups choirs all these things is what this is doing and it's all doing it in a state of mind that is not against not, that is not for the true gospel of jesus christ because it's not giving you a faith that is overcoming your iniquity and your sin and i'm going to show you guys that by the scriptures today he says do i now persuade men or god this persuades man to get in the door or do I seek to please man for if I still please men I would not be a bond servant of Christ what a terrible thing you know if you're not a bond servant of Christ you're not his your name's not also not written in the Lamb's book of life and that's the only book that can give you eternal life persuade God be a servant to God if you love your neighbor you'll tell your neighbor the truth you won't tell your neighbor a lie you won't twist the gospel up you won't say that it's okay, but you'll restore your neighbor. How do you restore your neighbor? Not sin, repent, sin, repent, sin, repent. But you give them grace and mercy. Let them, let them have a shoulder to lean on in times of trouble, in times of need. But you have to tell them the truth, that their sin can destroy them forever. Can separate them from God for an eternity. Luke chapter 13. Luke 13, glory to God. God's word is true. Do I now persuade man or God? I want to persuade God. And I love you guys. And that's God loves you guys. And that's why God chooses things of this life. He still has, he still has a remnant out here. He still has people out here. He told, he told Elijah, I still have 7,000 that haven't been their need of bail. God still has some people out here. Even though the Lord said, when I come back, will I even find faith? Yes, the road's that narrow and that straight, guys. And this is not what the, this is not what they're teaching. But let me tell you what the Lord teaches. And let me tell you what His servants teach. They teach pureness. They teach holiness. They teach that grace does not fornicate with sin. That Christ does not fornicate with Belial. That God and mammon do not exist. That the world is, is enmity with God. And that we must be crucified to the world with all of its lusts with all of its passions and with all of its desires and be crucified with Christ. As Paul taught Galatians 2.20. Glory to God. Luke 13, I want to start here in verse 22. Jesus says this, And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter in through the narrow gate. For strive you know what strive means put forth an effort these people are just telling you all you have to do is acknowledge no you, there's no striving in this pamphlet there's no you need to be crucified with christ you need to crucify the flesh with all of its passions none of those things are in this but it's all about confess it with your mouth and and if you confess it that means you believe it and it's all about getting the people it's about persuading man of another doctrine and it's not of christ it's an accursed doctrine, as he talked about in Galatians chapter 1. It's persuading man. It's not persuading God. Let me persuade God. Let me take the straight and narrow path. Let me please my Lord and my Savior that died for me. Let me lose my life, and let me find my life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. It's God that gives life. Glory to God. Strive, he says. Strive, let us strive. To enter in through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. They will not be able. Because they're believing the lie. They're believing the lie. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door. 
and you began to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, look what they're doing. Open for us. He will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. Then you will begin to say, but we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, sin. You did not stand against sin, but you tried to conform grace and sin together. My grace is sufficient for thee, Paul. For in your weakness is my strength. Grace is stronger than anything in this life. Don't be persuaded by the serpent. You must strive in this grace, walking through the valleys of the shadows of death, walking through the fiery trials, walking through the afflictions and the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Because he that is in you is the one that loves you. He died for you. This pamphlet didn't die for you. This pamphlet kept you in this world. But Christ Jesus, he came to get you out of this world. And he came to save you from what's coming up on the world. The wrath of God is coming. Watchmen, sound the trumpets. The end is nigh. The coming of Christ is soon. Make sure that when he comes and shuts the door that you're in with him, that you are a wise virgin and not an unwise virgin. These are unwise virgins. You workers of iniquity, you workers of sin, Look what Jesus says. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What? We went, we acknowledged your name all this time? And now you're going to say, I don't know you? You didn't hear the good shepherd's voice. You were listening to the deceiver. This is the deceiver. This is the truth. Make sure you search the scriptures out. For in them you will find eternal life. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. See, they thrust out the true gospel. This, you take the true gospel that I'm preaching, that Paul preached, or that any of the prophets preached, this throws them out the door. They thrust them out. But look what Jesus says. They will come from the east and west and from the north and south and sit down in the kingdom of God. We're going to come from all nations, from all tribes. Amen. From everywhere throughout the land. Look what he says here. And indeed, there are last who will be first. See, we that got thrust out are last. They might be first right now as part of this world. Look what he says. And there are first who will be last. Glory to God. Blessed are they that are afflicted and mourned and persecuted. For theirs is the kingdom of God, is what the Lord says. We may be last in this world because these, these accursed children do not allow us in the doors. And if they do, they will always thrust us out. 